There are at least three times throughout my career where I burned myself out. I hate saying that out loud. I hate admitting that. Um, but it's true. I learned a lot from the process. But what I have learned more than anything is that finding balance takes a lot of hard work. And there's a lot of pieces that go into balance and what balance means to you. But I know that that the, the implications and the repercussions of not having balance are severe. And in fact, uh, more than once I had chest pains that we finally later learned were because I was stressed so much that I was uh, constricting uh, the walls inside my chest and I was making them inflamed because of, of how I was reacting to stress. Uh, the worst one ever was when, you know, my doctor, uh, you know, said, uh, I don't want you to come in to see me. I, I need you to go to the ER. And I spent a day in the ER, you know, 12 hours or so in the ER getting uh, x-rays and, you know, having my heart checked and, and uh, you know, to have my doctor say, you know, you are going to kill yourself from stress and you can't, you know, you have to make a choice. I still didn't get a whole lot better on, on that end for a while it, after the uh, emergency room visit. I had to have another kind of wake-up call. But when I got that last wake-up call, I knew I can't, I can't do this. I need to operate differently. And so the last, last uh, kind of burnout that I had was many, many years ago. It's been a long, long time. But it stuck with me so much that I started taking really positive, proactive steps for myself, but I also wanted to make sure that I kept a great tight eye on anybody who worked for me, because if you're a high overachiever, you can, you can find that yourself in that same boat pretty easily. So here is what I know. Work-life balance is your responsibility, my responsibility. You know, it's not anybody else's fault. It's not the fault of a company or a manager. Now, don't get me wrong, there are certain circumstances where, uh, where you may have an awful lot asked of you and, uh, and maybe the person or company doesn't seem to have much uh, uh, care whether or not you're driving yourself crazy. But for the most part, for the most part, most of us lack boundaries. And, and the way that we get ourselves to that point of not having balance is that we haven't set the boundaries. And we, it's a lot easier sometimes to blame it on a company. Um, and yes, there are times when, when, when they do have those, uh, those pushes. But for the most part, if we really reflect, we find that we haven't set clear boundaries in order to make sure to protect ourselves. So the funny thing was is that as I moved through my career and really started to talk to people about making sure they maintain work-life balance, some of the people that worked for me um, took it a little too far. And I felt like there were a few of them that were operating more on a life-work balance versus work-life balance. And I remember uh, you know, that there were a couple that, that were more concerned about how they were, you know, doing all the other things in their life that that had to take priority over actually completing tasks for their job. And so I had to go back and say, no, we've got to reset this because I'm not saying I want you to have work-life balance so that you just are, you know, footloose and fancy free all the time. We've got a business to run. We have objectives we need to meet. Um, I want you to have those things, but I need you to also make your work a priority. So when I would say that, I'd say what I, what I want you to do is when you're at work, I want you to work fully. And when you're not at work, then be not at work. You know, let's, let's have the cutoffs. If it's an emergency and I need to reach you, okay, that's different. But for the most part, I'm not going to be reaching out after work hours or your weekends. Those are your times. Um, and if there's things that you need to incorporate during your work week too that don't impede your ability to complete your job successfully, then just let me know so that you know we are always communicating about how to keep that balance. So it takes a conscious effort to, to really be 
able to have this balance and and there's going to be times when one or the other suffers i mean it, there's no doubt about it deadlines need to be hit new projects come out of the woodwork so there are going to be times that no matter how well you've done at setting your best intentions that things will creep in there but you know really setting your intentions early and often and reviewing them will help you to maintain balance So here are my key points. Number one, know what is important to you and why. So if exercise is really important, family time, eating healthy, all those things that are important, then understand that they are, be clear about it, but know why. Because until you are very clear about what is important, you won't make time for it. Number two is set very clear boundaries. Something like I will exercise each morning before I answer my email is an example that somebody told me once and I said, that's fantastic. I really love that. The fact that you're going to work on yourself before you get your mind in the mental space of your job, it will make you a better employee. Absolutely. Number three is communicate those boundaries to your team and to your manager as well. Now, this might get a little dicey because you wonder, well, gosh, how much can I share or should I share about my personal life? But think about this. Um, one of the things that I told my, uh, my team, for instance, is that I really value my evening time. Uh, my, my personal you know, relationship and my home is really important to me. So I'm not going to email you or call you after six o'clock unless I have no other choice. So then you'll know that if I'm calling, it's something really important. And here's the thing, I want you to do the same. I want you to have those same boundaries. Um, it's, it's difficult when people don't know what your boundaries are and they don't uh, know when they might be infringing on them. So when you communicate it clearly, you're, you're modeling for them, but you're also saying, here's what's important to me. And I wanna know what's important to you as well. Number four is you've got to practice what you preach. You have to set the example. So if you are a leader and you share some of the, the, the boundaries that you've set for yourself and you show that, then you also have to live it. So if you say, I'm not going to call you after six o'clock unless it's an emergency, you better not call after six unless it's an emergency. So really being true to what you're trying to, to set for yourself and being clear that boundaries are important for us to be able to be at the peak of our performance. So my, my real uh, excitement of, of this concept came when I realized that I had days that I was really hyper productive. And they were also days where I had very low overall stress. I mean, there might be the stress of urgency to get things done, but not stress in a bad way. So when I started reflecting on this a few years ago and I had started a mindfulness and meditation practice, you know, that was really important to me. And one day I was just thinking about, you know, why am I more effective some days than others? And I, I have a journal that I write in all the time. It's business ideas or thoughts or concepts or to do's um, that are all business related. And I usually write the day and the, you know, where I am, what city I am. Sometimes I write what my weight is that day because <laughs> I'm tracking all those things. But I would, um, I was looking back and I realized I would also make notes like I, I went for a run today or, you know, I did the, you know, focus meditation today or I did a sleep meditation last night. Or, and I realized when I went back and looked over this, that on the days where I meditated, I was more effective and had reduced stress. The days I exercised, I had better focus and was less stressed. And the days that I was journaling, I got a lot more accomplished. And then what I really realized was the day I did all three, I was really productive and my stress was extremely low. So I started tracking it and I started just buying, you know, making a little star in my journal and I would, I'd, you know, put this little star there and it just felt so good to get these stars. I wanted more stars, a little bit of gamification. So then one day I was out at a store and I found some, some like yellow puffy star stickers. So for the heck of it, I bought them. I started putting those in my journal and then I started putting them on my calendar and I started looking at this calendar going, wow, look at how much more productive I am. 
So I decided to make a year of it. So I actually took an entire year. I started like October 5th in 2017 and I went for one year and I said, for one year, I'm going to try and get a gold star every single day. And I printed all these paper calendars and they were all over my wall here in my office. And, uh, and it was hilarious as I was doing this because then I started to stress out about well, what happens if I miss a day? Oh my gosh, how can I say I'm going to do a year of the gold star and I might miss a day. I'm not going to be perfect. And then I started realizing, oh my God, I'm making myself stressed out by recognizing the days I'm not stressed out. <laughs> Only I can come up with that. So I actually made it the entire year with all but 17 days with a gold star. I just decided if I didn't get one, it was fine. Actually, the first day that I missed was Christmas Day because I forgot to journal. And I remember going, oh, I can't believe you didn't do that. Well, we were on vacation on a boat in the middle of the Caribbean. <laughs> Who cares if I journal? But that process really taught me that the more I look at clearly the things that are important to me and that reduce my stress, it will definitely impact my balance. So here's your assignment to go through just what we talked about. Number one, spend some time and list what's important to you. Time with your family, fitness, health, eating right, planting a garden, uh, volunteering your time. You may have 10, 15 things on that list, but make sure that the most important ones are written down so you can see them. Two is incorporate those things into your daily schedule and figure out how to make the time for them as well as being able to accomplish all your other responsibilities. And the three is, don't wait till tomorrow to start this. Start it today. You can still impact your day today. A lot of times we wait until tomorrow to get things started. But by taking care of yourself today, even if just one little step, you're already proving that you find balance important to you and that you're willing to make the sacrifices to do it. And as always, share your comments, questions, and feedback to SYP app at shockyourpotential.com because once a month, one lucky person will win autographed copies of my books.